Well, this time, welcome everybody to Mega Campaign 2020. Uh, I don't mind those guys, they're just, uh, they're for, I, don't, I have no reason. So, every year on this channel, we go ahead and create a Mega Campaign, where we go from usually CK2 to EU4 to Victoria 2, and ending off in Hearts of Iron 4, all on the exact same save game. So, we go usually from the year 1000 to, you know, the, the end of Hoi 4, so 1950s, the latest. Uh, a lot of shenanigans happen, a lot of storytelling, and great characters are rising throughout this whole thing, and we are no doubt gonna have some more this time around, I imagine. M my face when locked indoors for a whole year. Uh, but yeah, uh, I want to go ahead and say thank you very much for everyone for the uh, whole support this year. And uh, everyone that subscribed to the channel. And if you want to go ahead and help the channel out more, feel free to hit the like on this video. You know, I want to smash that like goal of uh, 50 thousand likes <laughs> I don't know. and most importantly for making this series even happen i want to thank every single one of the mod developers working on the mods to actually make these converters possible i'm going to leave every single one of their links down below that i can find in the description and pinned in the comments uh guys if you also want to do your own uh, converting from games go check them out they're all amazing they're really well done and they are Keeping this series going every Christmas. But yeah, we're switching it up. We're in CK3. It's a brand new spanking shiny game with all the same country. So you guys know the rules of the Mega Campaign. Usually I don't go too ham and I always kind of have a little twist on things. So today, obviously, we're going to have to create our own ruler again. And I've kind of been thinking for the longest time on who I want to play. There's a lot of people in the world and obviously we only have access to this map as to whom we shall start and where we shall take our empire. And whilst we have done England and Spain, I feel like we need to give France a go. Yeah, that's right, France. And we're gonna have to create our epic Frenchman character. Right, when I think Frenchman, what do I think of? Ha 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 ha! Oh ha, most beautiful man in all of Paris. With a smile that can melt a thousand madamasa. Pepe le Pepe Bajati. Ah, hola mama mi. That is right, I am the romance king. Madame come la sit on my lap. <laughs> What's that? It's just my bigot. Pepe, whilst being a absolutely stunning human being, of course, has his own flaws, and we will get into those very quickly. But for now, we just need to admire this beautiful Frenchman. Of course, Pepe is a romantic type. A man who can swoon any woman with his baguette. Uh, also, he is French, so this one is kind of a given. He is also ambitious. Ambitious and ready to conquer a kingdom. For the traits that I'm going to give little Pepe, he is obviously, well, he's got the bunny rabbit trait, and I think that speaks for itself. His whole of bunny is a healthy man. He's gallant, obviously, being the most honorable Pepe of La Pepe Begetti. And of course, he's a seducer of all women around, married or not. And, um, he's also a lunatic. We're gonna add that one on for the fun of it. And if you look at this man, um, if, if you don't see lunatic, uh, well, he's definitely a lunatic. Now, for his points, you might be wondering why I've put them up so high. And it's pretty simple, but I won't spoil it immediately. But Pepe, we need to have around for a while. That's all I can say. I don't want to spoil anything, but trust me when I say... This won't be here forever, uh, but of course I don't want it to uh, be too easy, and uh, believe me when I say this is not going to be too easy with what I have planned. Ah, oh, there he is, Pepe Le Pepe of Baguette, who is the King of France at the age of 18, and he is ready to lead his nation to um, probably not success now I think about it. Okay, so first thing as King of France, we need to sort out the fact we have a million damn counts under us. Um, Pepe is going to have a fun time doing that, and I did give him two little daughters to start off with, although they, they don't actually look like my daughters. Um, not as beautiful as Pepe. Now, whomstever do I want to marry? I probably want someone with a good learning or a good diplo just to keep everybody happy. Oh, now, while Judith is not a uh, highborn, I am very tempted to marry her because she has the intelligent trait, which would go well with the traits we can have inherited. Um, 
including lunatics, that's gonna stick with us for a while, I imagine. Oh, I just, uh, I just beat up, uh, William the Conqueror while trying to romance my own wife. Um, uh, get out of here! Oh my god, my archbishop is, uh, is talking crap about my wife. <laughs> I've gotta beat him up! Oh, my wife has popped down our first son. He's got the Herculean trade and the bunny rabbit trade, which is pretty good. And he's also wearing eyeliner. Um, I've never seen a baby come out the womb with that before. Ah, Pepe Le Grand, uh, Le Pepe of Baguette, has gone ahead and gained the trait Charming. He was a charming little French man. Nah, I'm not too sure about that, though. So, obviously, William, uh, the conqueror, aforementioned bastard, has gone ahead and now conquered England. But he has taken a duchy with him, so we will need to take that back at some point. I shall name him Galigbeer. Like a true Frenchman, I have a many children. They're also beautiful. Uh, my daughter has given birth, but I also have her locked up because she has too damn sexy. Someone's gonna have to take Pepe away from me. It's too much power. I can't stop him. He's taking over my personnel. Um, I mean, guys, we're sending Pepe over to the uh, HRE so he can bang the Emperor's wife and net me 1500 prestige, baby. There we go. Uh, nice 1500 prestige from that one. Thank you very much. We kind of want to get this as high as we can. So apparently, a small child overthrew the King of England, whom I've married a beautiful daughter of mine to, and now Duke William is trying to get his independence. So I had to come down here and 1v1 him in a sick battle, which we absolutely clapped him in. Oh, how the mighty have fallen, Mr. William. Oh, wait a second, this isn't even uh, William the Conqueror, this is just Duke William the Third of Normandy. I completely read that wrong somehow. Um, that's just a random guy called William that tried to overthrow the king. <laughs> I have lost my t-shirt. Great. Because of his lunatic perk, He's just not wearing clothes anymore, and no, no, no one in the damn kingdom is either to- Oh my god, it's, it's like everyone. Everyone in my kingdom is no longer wearing clothes. Um, you might be wondering why you can't see them not wearing clothes. That's because I turned the nudity option off, and, um, Pepe's gone crazy! Just what I was waiting for. Crusades, baby! Uh, I also... Assume this is what triggered the crusade. Uh, there we go. The first crusade has been called, and I am ready. Uh, we are pretty much at the end of our life at the age of 65, and we need to go out with a bang. We also need to make sure that one of our daughters is the winner in this scenario. Oh, I have nearly got the crusader trait. Pepe, the naked warrior. Uh, I just love the fact that this dude, 67 year old man, turned up naked to the, the holy land. <laughs> oh, there we go, we already won. And I think it looks like our beneficiary might be the new queen of Jerusalem. And whilst Pepe was a interesting old nudist of a man, I think I want to hang out in the Holy Land. Oh, wee oui, wee, oui, it is me, Queen Uh, now you understand why I didn't really care about, uh, old Pepe over there. Oh, I swear he's King Pepe the Foolish of <laughs> Uh, but now you understand why I didn't care too much about giving him too many good stats, because we were never gonna play as him. We were coming down here to the Holy Land. Uh, the only problem is that, uh, King Pepe is our heir, so this might get a little bit messy. <laughs> And I think, uh, being a 40 years old, we might be a little bit too late to pop out an air, but you, you never know. Queen Lili Lula Lili of Jerusalem <laughs> might have some life left in her. Now, being over here in the Holy Land is going to be quite the challenge. We need to get as much land as we can, to get as powerful as we can, but first off, we need to actually control the population, which is actively rebelling against us. That's right, get yourself a real waifu. Queen Lili Lula Lili of Jerusalem, the Crusader Queen. Yes! God damn it, you should look proud, my friend. How you managed to do that, I have no idea, but we're getting an heir. Uh, we don't have to worry about our nudist father coming over to usurp our kingdom. There we go, we got ourselves a daughter, Princess Le Pepe II. Now, she might not have any cool traits or anything, but she is an heir, and that is all that matters. We've also got to quickly put down the population that's not too happy about the, the French queen that's now in charge of them, I imagine. Oh, dear lord. <laughs> What are you packing down there? Oh my dear lord, now that is literally Pepe Reborn. You will be king of our country. Why did I just get the nickname The Fishy? <laughs> 
There you go, we've won our first big expansion war there, and we are looking pretty good on the map, and we've been converting the provinces and getting them to our culture as well, and we're uh, trying to s secure ourselves before the they come back and try to take Jerusalem. Oh my god. How are you still alive? <laughs> Jesus. He just won't die. You're 91 years old. Oh my god. He's finally dead. And I'm assuming that's his grandson that has taken charge. I, I'm not too sure who the hell this guy is, but he's he's it's not the genetic masterpiece that was whoever he, he came from. Oh, we got ourselves a crusade on the midst. We are going to go ahead and take out Egypt. And I've put one of my nieces on the throne for it. So uh, nice to keep an ally around, really. So interestingly enough, I can actually adopt the Outrema culture i'm not too sure what that is but it's something specific to um the crusaders down here so i i guess why not really which uh that means we can actually go ahead and be the head of our own culture head which means we can do our own tech and stuff which is actually very cool uh also if you wonder what happened to the crusade they did win it but then they immediately lost it and this guy <laughs> proclaimed himself sultan and i've just declared war on him quickly while he's weak now that is a nice looking jerusalem we are getting quite old now we are 77 years old but i'm hoping we inherited some of our wonderful father's genetics who lived to the right page of 93 oh i lost <laughs> i lost the nickname the fishy and now i'm the sage <laughs> so at the moment we're in a constant state of warfare we're mostly crusading as much as we can to try and form an empire before everyone else kind of gets back in shape but at the moment uh, a lot of the emirates around here just keep exploding oh well that's it that's all she wrote she lived to the age of 88 and boy does she get a lot done uh, but now we are playing as her son king pepe of jerusalem who is a actually very very good guy but his heir is also the guy i've put in charge of saudi arabia down here and he also is very very good so we're in a very good position here uh, have I said good enough yet? And our one goal at the moment is to form the Outremer Empire. We need quite a bit of land to do it though. We're going to need pretty much all of the Middle East and a bit of Saudi Arabia. And we're also going to have to get all of the Byzantines to get a part of it. So it's going to be interesting and a challenge. Uh, that's what you get for revolting against me, my friends. <laughs> you won't be doing that again because you're all dead. That's interesting. Okay, so France has been um, usurped by King Sigmund, but... King Pepe Le Poop is now Egyptian, and I don't know how the hell that happened. This is going to be one cursed ass game. <laughs> oh, we got another crusade this time for Spain, and obviously being the crusader state, I've got to go ahead and give them a little helping hand, mostly because the AI is completely useless. And would you look at those, I put our cousin in charge of uh, Andalusia, but uh, she doesn't have any heir, so it's just going to go to count garlic bread of okay funny thing is i've clearly called someone garlic bread at some point and that's passed down to this poor man oh father passed away and now we are king pp of jerusalem and oh my lord is he a chad look at that eye pack also for whatever reason my brother also lost an eye <laughs> we're a family of eyeless buffoons uh, and the mongols just spawned then i'm not too sure what they're gonna get up to but hopefully they don't manage to get down here well uh well i was king pp for about three years there as it said and i died uh, after dying as my other guy and now i am king horn pp oh my god okay that's gonna complicate quite a few things i imagine yeah so having the mongols this close to my border um is, is not good uh <laughs> especially since they've got land i need to form my empire i mean as, as much as i'd love a big mongolian man on my border it is kind of scary Hence why I'm trying to murder him, so his empire will turn into uh, five more easily manageable empires. Oh, and uh, I, I'm dead. Okay, well, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, we are King PP, the destroyer of Jerusalem, though. Uh, what a man. Uh, the, technically, still a boy. We've got a bit of growing to do yet. Oh, oh, he's, he's dead again anyway, despite the fact my uh, assassination attempt failed. And he's still got Grey Khan. Okay, he's going to take a while. Oh, I actually scratch that. This might not take a while at all. Uh, that's not looking like a uh, very healthy Mongolian Empire. What exactly is going... <laughs> oh, killed enough of the Mongolian leaders that Mongolia now looks like... 
not Mongolian. And with that war against what was left at the Mongolians, we now have every province we need to create our empire. Unfortunately though, we do need to get a living legend prestige wise, which I am doing by banging everybody's wife but my own. Why don't I just beat up this old man to impress the Byzantine Emperor's wife who I'm trying to romance for prestige? Oh my god. What is this? This is... This is not going to be fun in EU4. There we go. Finally, I banged enough people's wives. I can now go ahead and finally form my empire. Oh, there we go. The empire of heaven. Perfection. There we go. Outrumor was already doing it for me. I think heaven definitely does it a bit better. Oh, there you go. I'm now Emperor PP the Destroyer, the Knight of Gabriel. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Dear lord. This map is a damn mess and a half. Uh, we, we just had a crusade, which culminated in my brother now being the king of Cumania. He's the king of Cuming. I looked away for one minute. There's now a dwarf in control of cum. So now that I've formed the empire, I probably won't be doing any more conquering, per se. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Why? Uh, I probably won't be doing any, maybe a little bit of conquering, okay? Uh, but now the empire is formed, I'm only going to go to 1350 now, and then we are going to go to E4. Don't expect a lot of clips in between then and now, I'm just going to let the game run for the most part and make sure my empire doesn't collapse. Um, okay, there was a crusade. I gave my brother the, the crusade winnings. Now I own Morocco. <laughs> uh, we are just going to go ahead and give that to my son. Yep, you can have it. Have fun over there. Well, we have hit 1350, which is where I said I would end. And we have done a lot of conquering. The Empire of Heaven has expanded quite a damn bit. The only thing I've taken was Egypt. And I released these guys over here because... Um, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, plus, it is kind of cool that my brother's ruling a kingdom over here, and we'll get to see what he gets up to in the next game, really. But, um, this is definitely the end, and as you can see, the world is a colossal mess. I probably won't do a lot of cleaning up of this. Um, I'll probably leave all this until Victoria 2. So, if, um, a lot of this hasn't fixed up by EU4, I'll, um, I'll try and make it a bit more consistent in Vicky, but we'll see about that one. I don't know what's going to happen in EU4, but... This is the map, this is how everything was, feel free to have a little look round and I'll uh, update you with EU4, exactly the comparison between then and then when we actually convert. So uh, a few little interesting things to look out for is uh, obviously the Catholic guys in Central Asia, uh, we've got a few Cafars down here in Southern France, and France is just a goddamn mess ever since, uh, well we left it. Spain, despite being all these separate different identities, is actually all Catholic now, uh, they did reconquista quite well and we've obviously got the Moroccans down here who are also Catholic. Uh, the Byzantines are incredibly strong and I'm also gonna probably be their biggest enemy when it comes to EU4 because they've got a lot of land I'm assuming I'm gonna want to go into. Another interesting one is Norway up here. They are pretty damn powerful especially since uh, they kind of kept a bunch of their uh, Viking land over here in Ireland and actually settled it completely. England is looking okay too. They've still got a few of their French possessions. Uh, Probably not the best they've been, though, with 669 troops. What are you doing? Uh, I'm not too sure how Africa's going to go. Mali looks pretty damn big and powerful. India, not a lot's changed over there. We've got the NAF over here, who are pretty damn big big. Uh, all of Mongolia and all the Mongolian sub-states have exploded completely. Um, Russia, Ruthenia, pretty damn big. Hopefully they get to doing some actual conquering our east, but uh, not too sure if that's going to happen. For the HRE, if we actually look at the states in them, this is how they will look in EU4 is separated like this. We've got Lotharangia looking pretty damn big. Frisia, you've already got like a United Dutch guys up there. All pretty interesting. Bohemia is free. Uh, the Hungarians are free. Austria, basically non-existent. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's going to be how we take the game into EU4. I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, first episode. And if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe button down below. Let's get the hype going. And most importantly... I would like to see, I should probably put this at the start of the video, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to make um, some fan art of uh, your favorite characters in the series. Maybe we can uh, get back to our founder one sec. <laughs> there he is, King Pepe the Foolish of France, where we came from. Uh, it's kind of funny to see 
you know, where we left off and where we are now. But uh, yeah, if you want to go ahead and do some fan art or stuff like that of the series, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, feel free to at me on Twitter at this link right here or put it on the Reddit right here. And uh, I will try to show a bit of it in the video by at least the end when we get to Hoi 4. So if you've got some cool little ideas or little things you want to throw in, feel free to do that. I'd really appreciate it. It'd be kind of cool to see your takes on Pepe the Foolish. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll leave it off there and stay tuned for EU4. <sighs> Round two, shall we say? Hello, my gravy festive babies, and welcome back to the Mega Campaign, where today we are continuing on our CK3 game into EU4. Pain, suffering, weird French people, we got it all. So yeah, sit back, relax, and let me take you on a journey on how French people should not be trusted in the Middle East, apparently. Was I leave a like? Please subscribe. Please. So boom, this <laughs> oh my god. Ah, it's so ugly. Um, there's there is just so much to unpack here that I don't think I'm really gonna go into a lot of it because dear lord. So for the most part, the world is a absolute state and a half. Here is the imperial map mode, here is the religious map mode. Um obviously Catholicism retook the holy land. Uh, we've also got the random bit of Catholic in Cumania from where we crusaded and we uh, obviously left off with these guys being the last crusader state which is pretty cool. Um, Norway has a personal union with Ireland that's <laughs> something. <laughs> and the Byzantines are actually incredibly strong and probably going to be our biggest enemy at the start of this game but uh without further ado i'm just going to go ahead and zoom out so you can see the mess and if you want to go ahead and look a bit more in detail feel free to do so we are going to go ahead and get into it so if you guys are enjoying the series feel free to leave a like and subscribe button down below and uh let's get straight into the chaos okay so starting off uh we're losing money we're losing money Quite badly. Uh, also, we don't have the best ideas. In fact, I'd go so far as to say we have some pretty terrible ideas, unfortunately. I mean, infantry combat's not bad, but the rest of these, not very good. And that morale one's kind of useless at the end, but, ah, uh, well. Uh, now, because we start in 1350, uh, we only will be able to do one technology until, uh, well, we catch up to the base start game, and, uh, everyone has feudalism by the look, so we're in a very advanced world. Now, we are kind of sandwiched between two enemies here, that being the Byzantines and the Persians over here. And obviously to the east, we also have this mega Indian state who have immediately rivaled me and I've rivaled them back. In fact, if we go by development, uh, the Byzantines are number one, then it's me, and then it's this the, the Naifs, the Nathans of the world in India. So yeah, I, I'm definitely going to have to worry about these guys eating up all the land, especially because it's so disunited over here with all of these broken up mongol like empire pretenders oh my god i just realized why i've got no money it's because i have forts pretty much everywhere oh my lord oh would you look at that the battle royale that is spain is starting to kick off which uh, should make sense really because they are all catholic they just need to um well figure out where they're standing oh my god i just realized a bit of adamite survived down here that that's the nudist religion in ck3 maybe that's pepe Maybe Pepe's still haunting us. So my first goal is definitely to cut off the Byzantines from going any further east, which means I'm unfortunately going to have to slap the Persians round just a little bit more. There we go. We also offered vassalization to Egypt down here, who are the other crusader state, and they have a few little cores down here so we can gobble up a bit more land and clean up the border in Egypt. Uh, so now that we've gone ahead and reached the only tech we can do for a while, as you see, we've got 880% on that until we get to the uh, base start date. Uh, I am just tech up, uh, sorry, devving up a few provinces and culture converting a few others so that uh, our, our great culture of Outrimer can reign supreme. Uh, every time I say Outrimer, I just think of rimming. It's, it's some sort of weird hybrid French crusader state thing. Uh, now, this is the first time I'm playing with the new governing capacity. Not too sure what that means or what this arbitrary number will do to me once I go over it, but I'm trying to uh, not go over it. Uh, it does mean we are limited on how much land we can actually take at the moment, so instead I've just been feeding my uh, little vassal Egypt a bunch of land and making them a big strong boy. Big strong boy with a big strong bunch of land, wink. Why is it only just clocked on to me? The burgundy <laughs> is in Spain. 
Oh my lord, and they also have Italy as a uh, personal union. Oh my god, okay, they might actually be a big boy there. Um... That's not very cool, bro. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be our first big war. Uh, we're gonna get to declare war on the prison teams, try and claim uh, bits of this North African stuff up here, because I notice they are at war with the Pope right now, and all my allies are willing to join, which puts us at a significant advantage against them. But... I'm also gonna have to deal with the Persians at the same time. Yeah, for a second, I thought the English wouldn't be a problem. But then I realized we're playing EU4, and nothing ever makes any sense when it comes to the AI on war. <laughs> so the English have just brought over their entire army to help with this, apparently. There you go. Bit of a costly war in terms of manpower, but we did absolutely thrash the Byzantines there, and we got a whole bunch of land kicking them out of North Africa, except for these landlocked provinces. But we'll deal with that at some point. That's right. I puppeted Ray. The country of Ray, where everybody is called Ray. Yeah, for some damn reason, I thought the EU4 start date was at 1399, but that's actually the EU3 start date. So we're actually still 40 years away from the uh, the actual game start date, which means we we have 40 more years of no tech, which is not that bad, because I've made Jerusalem the most prosperous place in the world. Uh, we've also spent most of our Diplo at this point converting all of the Middle East to our culture, the brilliant French made-up Altrima. Oh? It's not looking too good for the Byzantines right now. Uh, I, I got called in by my Rufinian allies, the Russians, who are actually quite a monster. And, um, I, I didn't realize everyone else was also beating them up. You know, looking at my fellow empires right now, um, I'm feeling like I should be worried, right? Is, uh, is there something you guys ate or drank that I should, I should be aware of? Oh. That's, um, that's very early. Oh, and, uh, we, we, I didn't even realize we already lost France to Cathar completely. Dear Lord. Crusader sacking the Byzantine Empire. Where, where have I seen this one before? Oh my god, 1445. Okay, we're finally in the normal EU4 game, which means we've immediately moved to the Age of Reformation because Sweden had some very bright ideas. But that does mean that we can finally do some damn technology. I've had so many points free that I, I've just been endlessly and probably... <laughs> just inefficiently spamming Jerusalem to be the most <laughs> developed province in the world. <laughs> if, you, if you could zoom in any further, it's, it's like Wakanda down there. Genuinely had no idea what I did. Picked. I don't want to do any colonizing in this game, and because of our lackluster, uh, well, <clears throat> fighting ability through our ideas up until halfway through, I've just got quality ideas, and we're just gonna go with that. Oh, I think I just missed that, but we've got ourselves a renaissance in Portugal. Okay. Uh, it's already spreading quite far across the world. I'm kind of glad it didn't spawn somewhere random, but yeah, that's not that bad. Don't mind me just putting down a couple, uh, you know, pretenders that don't agree that our new leader, Pepe Le Reborn, the 666, <laughs> deserves to be in charge. Literally the reincarnation of the devil there. Oh my god, okay. And they got colonialism too. Uh, Portugal op Although, I looked at that wrong. That's not Portugal at all. That's basically kind of Spain. Um, they're actually mopping up over here. Oh, hello, big boy. Uh, originally, I wasn't really going to bother with the Byzantines too much, but then I realized they have 4, 6, 7 tech, and I have 15, 14, 15. We need to put them out of their misery. I gotta say, Russia kind of sucked. Uh, Alexander definitely didn't weep because there was nothing left to conquer. Alexander got hard because he had cannons and India was free game. Can we just talk about how overpowered trade is in this game? Uh, <laughs> making a lot of money right now. God, I haven't really looked at what's going on colony-wise, but it looks like a god damn free for all jesus uh we, we got the dutch we got the french uh I mean, is this the danish who is this? this is the danish yeah uh we got we've got iceland and south america well the pope has come to be our uh now i ain't too sure what's going on here with bohemia <laughs> but um i i guess my ally austria is having a bit of fun i i don't even remember austria being there, but then again, I don't remember Russia being full siege down by Georgia and Sweden, so I, I gotta say, that's terrifying. You know, I was trying to clean up uh, a bit of Persia down here, and I was going to invite my ally Hungary, but they're 17,744 in debt. Damn, um, yeah, I really hate to see it. Uh, we, we were such good friends, Mr. Pope, but for some reason, 
I'm at war with you because my allies are doing something. I, I'm burning you to the ground. Ah, uh, okay. I definitely missed this one. Oh my god, it's all French too. It's like the French like powerhouse game. Okay, but apparently uh, Sweden's just got an eternal hunger because they just won't stop eating everyone. Oh my god. Oh, and they they also have the throne of Luxembourg. <laughs> So, uh, I've been playing for like 100 years now, really recording that much, mostly because not a lot's been going on. But that's because the game's been so easy, and uh, obviously, as you can see, money's no problem. Uh, manpower, army force limit, none of that's been a problem. And uh, it's not just been easy for me, as you can see by the Swedes. I've noticed that everyone is pretty overpowered. Let's just go ahead and look at the great powers right now in terms of development. Yes! I have just been endlessly conquering India for the most part. My governing capacity is ridiculously over. Probably not too over for you meta guys, but for me, uh, someone who hasn't really played with this before, pretty over. And uh, it's not just me that's been eating India. It's not just me that's been eating Central Asia. <laughs> I, I don't even know what happened to the Ming, but Russia also colonized around here? Like, it's, it's a bit of a mess. And everyone is caught up on technology too. It, like, well, everyone except the Byzantines, who are now landlocked in the middle of Hungary for some reason. Oh, I haven't... I, I just looked at Africa too. Why have I not been paying attention to Africa and the giant chunk that Britain's eaten and the giant chunk that Spain's eaten? Uh, Indonesia looks almost the same. Uh, they've taken a few chunks out of places, but nothing to... Oh my god, Australia. We have New Holland. Um, we have the... Hafunian Australia. The French are here. And if you're wondering where the Hafunians are from, somewhere over here. Oh, no. Um, they were over there. I just want to point that out. But um, they've been kicked out and now they just live in Australia. Yeah, sorry. New Zealand? <laughs> New Holland, my friend. Uh, for Europe, uh, Netherlands is actually quite big. France was actually under a personal union with Great Britain for a long time. I think they're actually now free and independent. Yeah, uh, Spain hasn't done anything at all that I can tell other than conquer all of Americas. Uh, I'm still kind of perplexed about the Austria situation, but Hungary's not been doing too well either. They were on a hot streak for a while, but then the, the Swedish horde came in and... Russia may as well just not exist. I think the most cursed thing though has to be the Pope with his papal Brazil and papal La Plata down here. I, I don't even know why he's down here. I, I, I can't even pronounce your name. Uh, but as usual, the Americas are just absolutely disgusting. Uh, United States breaking free from the French or the Dutch. I'm not too sure who they broke free from. It's pretty cool. Uh, the British California. <laughs> Why? British Mexico? Why? Uh, but yeah, I know I've got a hell of a lot of development, but a lot of that's just been me spamming my uh, PP into it for a long time, so I've not had anything to do with it. Um, Britain, on the other hand, is a monster. I'm really interested to see how this goes with Vicky. Uh, I would keep eating more of India, but I've got truces with the most of these people now, so um, it's probably going to get to Britain, I imagine, but I, I don't know how they're still gobbling stuff up. Actually, one thing I haven't checked out is the religion map. Mm, oh. Um, it's just all Catholic, except that that's where the Cathars went. They got kicked out of Southern France. <laughs> it's over to the New World. I ain't too sure about this, like, Central Asian horde, though. Uh, they're, like, beating up everyone around them, especially now that Ming's exploded. I, I, I have no idea what to do with the Great Sultan Bachman. Uh, I, I have a full slim of 828, but I just, I just can't be bothered to build them all. I mean, I guess it's safe to say we're, um, we're probably not going to get a, a united Germany anytime soon. And the Alignment just spawned, not in me. Thank you very much, Italy. Hey, why did it spawn in the Pope, actually, now I'm thinking about it? <laughs> Have you woke up a new man, Mr. Escrack? I literally woke up and was like, you know what, God? Kinda cringe. Ooh, one of Spain's colonies is actually trying to break free, but it's getting invaded by the United States at the same time? I what's going on here? I, I thought it'd be funny to build my force limit and to, this is giving me a headache to look at. This has got to be the weirdest war I've ever fought in any for. The army sizes are absolutely atrocious. This is quite literally World War Central Asia. If you're wondering what this is for, it's um, 
It's for this. <laughs> yeah, that's just a casual million men loss, sir. And I was I was just completely death stacking my armies around and losing them like an idiot. <laughs> Note to self, never go back to Central Asia. Just uh, over a million people dying for Azerbaijan. Uh, I don't know if you should go to a doctor, Hungary, but this um this Byzantine cancer appears to be growing. That's taking the uh the just a flesh wound thing to a whole new level when you immediately go to war with Russia after I pummeled you. What the hell? Yeah, there's nothing like seizing down someone's core territory, and the AI decides to counter that, they will invade South Italy! Your vassal state! Instead of defending their land. And to think, Maghreb, we quite literally used to be brothers, but now you've got the cursed Luxembourg throw. Uh, sometimes you just see stuff in EU4, and it's just like, why the hell are the. <laughs> why the hell are the Dutch <laughs> and the Pope's galleys having a fight? Oh my god, it's the, the fifth Swedish war of eating everything. Yeah, I honestly thought this was one country, but no, there's actually just another country called Lower Gurma here. What the hell is Lower Gurma? Sounds like a Star Wars character. <laughs> Sweden's reached all the way to the bone. I am, I, I am genuinely terrified of this. You know, I thought Denmark looked a weird colour, and then I realised it's actually Hungary. Right, we've hit 1725, and things are just going more and more haywire. So we're just, we're gonna call it here for now. Um. It's crazy. That's all I can say. Uh, for the past hundred or so years, I've just been cleaning up the borders pretty much, trying to make things look pretty, but I, I would have cleaned this up a bit by going nowhere near you again, buddy. But out of all of the cursed uh, EU4 games and mega campaigns we've done, this is definitely the most cursed. Without a doubt. Uh, as usual, going into Victoria, we will probably have to clean up a few things. Uh, a lot of people always ask, why do you clean stuff up? Blah, 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 blah. Because in Victoria 2, a lot of small nations like Gujarat down here, guess what? They will stay there for the rest of the game into Hoi 4. Uh, they will never be invaded. They will never do anything. And they will just sit there. When they could go to another nation like the British and uh, actually turn into something and make the game interesting. Uh, now, it's not like I'm just going to be like, yo, Georgia, you now belong to Russia. It's mostly just these uh, like small little nations that never really did anything or went anywhere. Uh, for the most part, like everything down here, I'll probably just like give this small nation to kill uh, stuff like it's just small stuff like that to uh, make this not so terrible uh, for your head cannon you could just say and you know the extra hundred years between now and Victoria to someone invaded them okay pat yourself on the back uh, but yeah I have no idea how this is gonna go down uh, here's a last look at the GPs uh, I am obviously number one I've been try well, I wouldn't say try harding I've just been Storming over everyone and here is a look at the map right now if um, Keep an eye on who you think is gonna be uh, some of your favorites uh, the Empire of Heaven chosen by God has led the world to uh, Catholicism and we have uh, we've done a lot of conquering. We've got a lot of land uh, taking India is gonna be very Interesting for us. Uh, we probably won't do a lot of expanding in Victoria 2 That's for sure, but we will be trying to keep this thing together somehow But yeah, I hope you're enjoying the mega campaign and stay tuned for tomorrow where we will be continuing this uh, with Victoria 2 Hope you enjoyed it leave a like hit the subscribe button and if you've got any more fan art or stuff like that Feel free to send it to my Twitter linked in the description or the Reddit or just, I don't know, draw it in smoke signals and hope that I'm around to see. Oh, hello there. Didn't see ya. Was too busy staring at this parrot. Hello there, my spicy gravy children. It's me, I saw Productions continuing our mega campaign. Those monkeys always been there. They look like they're up to something suspicious. We are making the great adventure today through Victoria 2. Uh, we've continued through CK3, we've done Europa Universalis 4, and now we're in the age of economic boom, industrialization, bit of colonizing, just a, just a bit of a scramble, you know, not too much, just a kind of a whole continent's worth. And we will be carrying on the legacy of Pepe Le Begetti as far as we possibly can into the great 
era of Victoria 2. Yeah, as usual, if you've been enjoying this series, feel free to leave a like and subscribe button down below. There'll be one more episode after this one, so get your little, your little booties in and strapped and uh, sparkly, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. So... Welcome to the world in 1820. Sure is a magically festive place, isn't it? And disgusting. I have no words for the disaster that has become of us here. But here we are, the empire of heaven, having a whale of a time. We've conquered a lot of land, and we've also made a lot of enemies. And now, the sad thing is, I think Europe is actually the better looking of all of the continents right now. Um, but that's because I really haven't shown you North America. North America's looking interesting and uh, that whole Hungarian I'm assuming personal union with Denmark has led to some interesting developments in the world uh, that on top of the fact that uh, Spanish North America is goddamn huge um, that's kind of scary South America is almost actually looking pretty decent with the Papal South America you got the Spanish South America then you got uh, the, the Papal Chile and then you got whatever the hell's going on over here did somebody drop a trifle upside down now, the two big African countries got wiped in the converter, but I think that's actually for the better, because I kind of want to see the Crusader States and the British, or even the Spanish, or anyone really actually do a bit of colonizing this game, but we did keep Nandongo, because I do love a big dongo, and then we also kept Mudapa, which I think broke through the Spanish, and Swahili, which is, um, I think that also broke through from the Spanish. They lost a lot of land down here. Australia! Still looking amazing, and I really have no words for whatever the hell this is. I, I'm pretty certain that one of these big powers is definitely going to eat up all of China, hopefully, and we might see some sort of conflict over there, but for now, well, we gotta go back to our country, the Empire of Heaven. Now, again, we aren't the only Crusader state still around. We still have the Crusader State of Africa, which was actually Morocco in the last game, but uh, I thought this was a much more fitting name from their heritage, and the fact that everyone in this damn nation and this game is French. Uh, something I missed out on before I actually um, showed it in the video, in the last video, was that the Kingdom of America actually has the Bonaparte dynasty on it. That's right, Napoleon's America. Without further ado, let's get straight into it and see what state our country actually is in. All right, I have a metric ton of soldiers. Uh, I have an incredible amount more to build, which is kind of fitting from where we left off in uh, EU4. And our most populated states are an absolute mess for some reason. Apparently, Hejaz is our most popular actual state. Then uh, down to our colonies in India, well, that's, uh, that's a lot of Indians. And the biggest, um, funniest thing is uh, a lot of it is all French now. Uh, whilst we might have converted all of the provinces in uh, EU4, they actually don't immediately all transfer like that. It actually goes by the history of the provinces and how long they've actually been this culture for. And obviously, because all of these guys have been French or Outremer before for the longest time, uh, well, they're, they're all French. And whilst I did convert a bunch of the Indian ones, not everyone over here is French yet but dear lord yeah, there is a lot of French people around we got the Crusader States of Africa they're French you got the Americans over here while well, they don't look that French they will actually start turning French because dear lord they're French <laughs> French and Kafar I did I mention that one but if you want to look at the uh, spaghetti of a mess that is Britain right now on the nationality map it's pretty bad. <laughs> they've got Anglo-Saxon down here. They've got English. They've got Norwegian in Ireland. They've got a little bit of Irish still left that the Norwegians didn't wipe out. You got a tiny bit of Scottish over there. And then in the north, heck, there's even a bit of Icelandic. Uh, a few wars have carried over from our save, which is the American Aquitanian Nationalist War, where they're trying to take New England, which they already own, so that's probably going to piece out immediately. The Russian conquest of Etkara from Georgia, and the British Langzangi Imperialist War. They're getting straight to business, aren't they? Great powers, exactly how they kind of looked last time. Oh, I did show off, actually. Uh, Scandinavia, or Sweden, is now the Northern Empire. I thought that was more fitting than calling them Sweden. Uh, and we obviously have the British Empire number two, uh, the Northern Empire, which is Sweden, Spain, Crusader States, Africa, they actually made it to GP, which is pretty interesting. The Netherlands, America, and Hungary. 
Uh, now, we are like GP by a lot, mostly because of our military power, which um, that's going to disappear very fast because I don't have the damn money to support that military. All right, if I am pause, how much money am I about to... I'm, I'm gaining some money. Oh, I'm really getting called to war by the Scandinavians for the liberation of Wales. No. Uh, unfortunately, I have much bigger problems, like trying to figure out the spaghetti mess that is our empire. And deleting my army immediately put me down third grade power, which is fine. <laughs> uh, don't worry, the army will be back stronger than ever. Uh, something I haven't talked about is our RGOs. Uh, we don't have a lot of good ones. In fact, I have noticed that for iron, there are actually some amazing iron provinces in places like Italy, where they have a 500k population. That is insane. It is safe to say we are not gonna have any iron problems in this game. That is for certain. Oh, let me just uh, building my explosive factories in Iraq. Hopefully George Bush don't spawn in this world. So we have immediately found ourselves in the French liberation of Aleppo war where the Pepe descendants have tried to go ahead and reconquer their old uh, Middle Eastern territory, which uh, we're giving them a good go and showing them how that's not going to be happening today, buddy. Ethiopians, seeing a moment of weakness, also went ahead and tried to get uh, Eritrea off us, but we did slap those guys about too, and now we've actually taken a nice bit of land off them. There is just all sorts of uh, unification wars going on right now. Uh, the Scandinavian liberation of Wales, though, I, I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, although I guess technically they are Norwegian, right? Yeah, they've got a whole bunch of Norwegian down here, so... So, you know, they do have a little core down here, so does Norway, which is why they're probably so hungry to get it. That's right, baby. We're coming home. The Great Liberation War has failed for the French, and now we have gone ahead and humiliated them by making them release Australia. Um, sorry for unleashing Australia around the world, by the way. Said I'd never be back, but I'm going back. And once again, <laughs> it's all for one province. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, they've still got 167 divisions, but they are uncivilized, so this will probably be a bit more of a cakewalk. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's still terrible over here. Uh, once again, don't ever go to Central Asia. You know, I might have taken a bunch of land, but it was not worth it. The worst part is, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back once more to, get, <laughs> to take Punjab. Holy... I wasn't expecting to see you! Oh my god. And the British War of Javanese Liberation is going down right now. I think this is an actual crisis war. And Germany is trying to get a whole bunch of land. Oh my god. I genuinely didn't think Germany was going to fall. But now I'm actually kind of scared. Meanwhile, we have allied with our French brothers from across the pond. And I have noticed that their population is getting more French by the hour. And we've got everyone forming as well. We've got Italy now too. And I noticed America's actually conquered a bunch of land. And they're going west. Although I think Germany did just lose that war with Austria. And um, they're, they're not looking too spicy really. Uh... Excuse me? What on earth is going on over there? Oh, it looks like Transvaal is trying to break free of Spain? Is that Spain that owned it? <laughs> oh, East Germany, West Germany, North Germany, South Germany, bit southerner Germany. I, uh, just more French people for the world. Oh, I did say we'd have to go back in at some point. It's like Vietnam, but I don't even have napalm to keep me sane. I, I cannot wait until I invent machine guns. From our next endless battle against the Horde, we now got a whole bunch of nice coal provinces, which is going to help fuel our already booming industry. Oh, there's Scandinavia burning down Europe again, and Germany's still trying to conquest Austria. Oh, somehow got caught up in a war with, uh, parts of China. You know what? I haven't done any colonizing for the most part, so this is, uh, I guess my, my first proper colony. Uh, I guess we could count India, but that was way more of a conquest than a colonizing, wasn't it? Does every war end up with me chasing these guys through the damn mountain? Oh, just had a crisis fire. I say fire, I didn't actually fire. I just backed one of them, and then uh, <laughs> that looks so big now, are ya? Uh, we've also made this Asia situation even more complicated, because now there's another China. There's China, 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 China. I've been thinking of where I want to go next, and uh, whilst I haven't got involved in many European affairs, if any at this point, other than fighting them through proxy, um, I'm going to go ahead and kill the Hungarians. Now, I'm not going to kill them completely, but I do want to clean up this border a bit. Uh, 
bit early for Rommel there, Germany. Now, I think there might be a bit of a confliction here on who exactly owns this part of Central America. So, when I went to War Hungary, I should have probably checked their cause, because the casus belli I went for was for liberating Greece. Now, I thought that wouldn't be a lot, but in the end, it turned out to be quite a bit. I just want to point out that that costed 11 infamy. 11. Although, to be fair, because the Byzantines ended up being so bad, all of these provinces are horrendous. Istanbul, or Constantinople, if it should probably be called, has 57,000 people living there. This land is barren and worthless. Oh, I didn't think that would actually happen. But, uh, I guess the Civil War's still gonna kick off. Uh, ain't too sure about <laughs> these borders, though. <laughs> well, after kind of ruin Hungary, it's now time to kind of ruin Greece. There you go, not too destroyed. At least I didn't do what I did to Hungary to you. Realized I've got an army stuck in the middle of the ocean. I really am the Holy Empire. Also decided to help out my French brothers in the little problem they're having. <laughs> I can't believe. I actually just fought Robert E. Lee there with Felipe Canroper. So, I just saw a crisis happen, and... What? So while I was at war with the Confederates, or just before, uh, Hungary said, screw it. I'm Slovakia now! Uh, also, Poland Lithuania just popped out of them too, but um, it's barely Poland and definitely not Lithuania. It's time for Operation Free Canada from Slovakia! Oh no. Oh, it begins. Here, go Canada is free, and I'm hoping they clean this mess up. Interestingly enough, the British actually uh, released India as originally a puppet, but then they broke free, which is... There's now free India. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I don't think they did release them freely, though. I think that might have had something to do with Scandinavia, considering they've taken their cores back off them. But I guess to balance it out, the British did eat all of Africa. I thought this land hadn't been colonized. But there's actually a country here. <laughs> it's just, it's the same color as the uncolonized land. Well, since India's free, I went ahead and cleaned the border up a little bit, and now that's looking nice and kind of straight. I just realized New Mexico is ruled by radical dictatorship. I'm just imagining Bernie Sanders doing a kickflip. Okay. Oh, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think our dynasty is gonna survive this, guys. Oh yeah, the old empire. It's not looking too fresh. Well, it has happened. The Empire of Heaven has fallen, and the Union of Man has taken its place. And with our new leadership under the Destroy Pepe Party Proletarian Dictatorship, we shall spread our communist word across the continent. There we go, we've also got a communist brother and made our way onto the mainland. Ah, and a bit of trouble over Swahili, eh? Hmm. Oh well, well, seems like our ideas are a bit too radical nowadays, huh? But uh, at least we got the Italians on our side. I think we're gonna lose. There we go. The Great War. Oh, we are trying to cut down the colonial menace and from our land, but unfortunately there is just too many of them and they've unsurprisingly overwhelmed Italy pretty quickly. Unfortunately, they are breaking through everywhere now. There is not much chance we can hold the line against the world here. Fortunately, we have no choice but to back down in this instant. And whilst we did not take the brunt of that, our ally Italy uh, definitely got mutilated quite a bit. The world was just not quite ready for our very radical ideas. After our great defeat in the war, we are unfortunately now having to pay a whole lot of money to a whole lot of people, which uh, isn't seeing too right for the uh, Union of Man's people. A lot of people are starting to question the Destroy Pepe party very, very quickly. With the failure of the communists, a new party has arisen promising to bring the nation back to greatness. The news of this new political party on the horizon, a lot of people seem interested. The people shall speak! And with the fall of Jerusalem, the powers of communism have been ridden from the nation, and a man stating himself to be Pepe Pitler has restored the monarchy as himself 
dictator. And whilst the monarchy is back and the empire is standing, it is simply ruled by one man with his ambition to rid the world of the powers that punished him. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas, ya ho 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 ho! Hello my gravy children and welcome back to the last part of the Mega Campaign 2020. It has been quite a spicy one this year and I guarantee it's probably one of the best or the best we've definitely had over the years. But as all things start, they must also come to a end. And uh, if you guys have enjoyed this series, uh, feel free to smash the hell out of that like button. Boy, that'd be great if that could be 10 billion likes. Is that possible? Uh, but also, I'm gonna be throwing a bit of extra special thing towards the end of the video, so make sure you, uh, follow along there, because I wanna show off a bunch of stuff you guys have been doing in the background whilst these videos have been going up. But yes, we left off in Victoria 2 in a very difficult situation where we had lost the Great War and we had turned communist and then we, um, well, something else happened uh, towards the end, didn't it? And it's definitely going to make this one very interesting. That is right. It is uh, me, Pepe Pitlard. No affiliation with people of historical basis, but on the side I do also dabble in a bit of uh, <laughs> womanizing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I eat the spicy garlic bread. <laughs> so after the culmination of the Great War, where uh, me and Italy were completely destroyed, the powers have slightly shifted, and the communist regime and the Union of Man had fallen, and they've reinstated the Emperor as the Empire of Heaven. Uh, unfortunately, though, no one's actually seen the Emperor. Um, apparently, he's somewhere. Uh, sub doing something, but we we've been assured he's definitely fine. He's doing great, wink. I don't think there's actually an emperor, uh, especially with the sudden rise of the German Republic. All eyes are starting to look from the old east and towards the new Europe. But unfortunately for them, <laughs> they're about to meet my budgetty. <laughs> A few things have happened in our little dismay though, such as the fall of the Crusader States of Africa, they have been replaced by Morocco, and the fact that Scandinavia, upon the resurgence of Russia as somewhat of a power, can no longer claim the mantle of the Northern Empire. And thus they just decide to embrace what they really are, which is just a bunch of Scandinavians. Over in the New World, not a lot has actually gone on. We obviously still have the newly independent Canadians, who are of, I think, Dano-Hungarian heritage. It's a bit of a meh. Uh, you also have the Kingdom of America, which is a fledgling power that's constantly been at war with Mexico to try and get all of its manifest destiny, although they never got Alaska. And uh, I... I don't want to get started on what's going on down here. Uh, Africa, once again, has really just been sort of taken by one big power, which is Great Britain, and they even have the British Congo down here, but Spain has also kind of re-established their presence and got quite a bit of land themselves, and I'm pretty sure these little nations down here that in Victoria we didn't even know existed are actually puppets of the Spanish. But no one ever got Madagascar. Asia in itself is still a colossal disaster. Thankfully though, the Chinese Empire, which I actually released in a war with um, whoever it was over here, I think it was still the Ming, has actually gone ahead and actually reconquered all the land, which they did towards the end of Victoria 2, which is good. We haven't seen anything from the Japanese, but we do still have the Korchin Horde up here, who I'm um, pretty sure they might start making a ruckus down here at some point. And uh, as usual, we're just... We're not gonna, we're gonna, we're not gonna go there. Now, the good thing is, is that whilst we may have lost our army through the uh, Great War capitulation, we are actually, we were rebuilding at the end of Victoria too, especially after the revolts that happened. Now, we still do have the biggest industry in the damn game, but unfortunately, we were slightly getting caught up by the Germans, who are definitely 
Well, they're, they're gonna try put us to shame. Yeah, the, the big economic powerhouses we have here is definitely the Scandinavians and the Germans. But it doesn't look like these guys are allied anymore as the Scandinavians have moved towards France and Georgia. And because of our lackluster results in the Great War, we are pretty much technologically backwards, which is definitely gonna put us at a bit of a disadvantage here. And something we need to catch up on. Uh, also, because of the way Victoria 2 gets converted in navies, uh, we do just have a massive cruiser stack, which, um, it, it's not bad, but it does kind of suck. Uh, now, we are sort of a third power here, because the Germans, the British, and the Spanish are all allied together, and the Scandinavians and the French allied together, with the Georgians on top. We are just sort of vibing out here, because we didn't even trust the damn Italians after what they did to us. Oh, well, oh, well, look at that. The great powers once again spitting on our bajetti by making us disband our navy, which I will do, just because the threat of war is actually... I, we're not ready for that, just just yet, but um, if it was actually a decent navy, I wouldn't delete it. But it's kind of trash, so I'm gonna get rid of it anyway. Wow, we've got a war actually kick off between the Scandinavians and their ex allies, the Germans, because they wanted to invade Czechoslovakia, which the Germans thought was a bit too much. Uh, so, right now, it's the Scandinavians versus the Germans and the British, and I don't think they're gonna come out too fondly in this one, especially since I realized that their ally, the French, have seen the errors of their ways and have left their faction. That is right, the motherland has listened to Pepe's teachings and... They don't quite get it, but it is an improvement. Oh, uh, yeah, that's definitely... That's not looking too good for the Scandinavia. Now, whilst the world is slightly busy with their little war, we are gonna go ahead and do a thing called subverting the global peace. Now, whilst we did go ahead and invade you, Greece, we were also the ones who freed you. Now, whilst we also left you with a communist regime that you also overthrew, I think it's time you join my heavenly empire. Oh? I try to save you, Greece. Uh, now I do want to note that this is a peacekeeping mission into Greece. With the outbreak of the uh, the war up in the north, it's it's only fitting that you know things could get unstable down here. And but I, I've just got to protect the poor people of Greece by shooting them. There we go. It was a peaceful mission that only left a uh, hundred thousand Greek people dead. Definitely worth it. See what the Scandinavians are dealing with right now is. 400 years of revenge after they kept raiding Europe. There you go, with the, uh, the war with Greece, we've brought them under our heel, under the new leader, Mr. Pavlos Zemis, good guy, you know, is now, uh, gonna be following us very closely in our grand scheme of plans. Uh, we've also decided to go ahead and take control of the old British colony of India, which, um, really needs to be brought back under heel before any of our own India lands starts to get ideas of independence. Oh? You just don't learn, do you? Sorry, guys, just can't have people thinking that freedom is a privilege they get under the new world order of... Ah, uh, yes. Free India. Totally, totally free. Uh, you see, if I, if I put free in the name, you can't sanction me at the diplomatic table, right? Oh, well, that was the great disassembly of the Scandinavian Empire and... Russia? Kind of a thing now. Wait. German Empire! Uh, uh, Maximilian von Hindenburg. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. Wait a second. War Blood Empire of Heaven! Well, well, well. I see exactly how this one is going to go. Oh, I was just looking at the Kingdom of America declaring war on Guatemala, the just annexed Mexico for some damn reason, and then France also declared war on Spain. Oh. Brothers United, eh? Oh, we weren't quite ready for a war, but we are gonna join and help out the motherland. It is time for a bit of fun, eh? Petite mon ami. Oh my god. It's like some sort of French Avengers Assemble. We, we got the Americans on board too. Now, I'm seeing fit that we knock the UK out as soon as we can, who is in this war and join Spain's alliance, or Spain join their alliance. Not too sure how that went, but uh, we've already guard naval supremacy with our state-of-the-art navy and the fact that uh, we've got a bunch of bombers over it blowing whatever they have out of the water. The only thing is I have no idea what they actually have on that death trap of an island they got going. Oh my god, you tell me they didn't even have their port garrisoned. Okay, whatever, we're in England. How many troops do they have? They have upwards of 205 troops. 
Okay. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm convoy raiding all around them. So if they do bring any troops back from assuming Spain, no, I don't even see any troops in Spain. Where is their army? Guatemala. They're all in Guatemala. Oh, no, no, we do have a few troops over here, but definitely not enough to stop the French menace. Oh, the Brits did manage to bring their army back, but with a little naval invasion behind them, it looks like that turned out to be in vain. <laughs> Jacques Met, monsieur. Now, because the Scandinavians are actually a puppet of the British because of the last war, we're actually going to have to take those guys out too. But a version of them has actually broken free and is now on our side, so hopefully that makes this a little bit easier. Uh, now, there is actually a bit of a surprising Scandinavian resistance here, but uh, for the most part, they are being dealt with post hastily and very quickly so we can move on to our greater objectives in the world. Oh, there's the Scandinavians capitulated, and in their place we have Scandinavia. Uh, somehow the British are still turning up late to the party with wherever the hell they had their troop. Oh my god, another Scandinavia just popped out of Danzig. That's free Scandinavia. Uh, this might get a little bit complicated in the peace deal. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, now our French-American brothers aren't looking too good against the Mexi-Guatemala, Guatemexican. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and try to uh, relieve some pressure over here because um, they had one damn job and they failed to accomplish it. Okay, we literally dropped our entire army on the shores of Guatemala. There we go. It wasn't too damn difficult, was it, America? I mean, Hugo Gallini is just um. He's clearly on a different thought path than the rest of everyone here in this alliance. Well, although saying that, the French haven't really done much either. We've just had trench warfare for the past how many long years we've been at war with these guys down here. Also, uh, the Germans have been at war with the Italians. I, I don't know how long for, but, um... Sure, I guess that's a little sideshow. Oh, this is something we probably should have done a while ago, but it's time to bring North Africa back into the Empire. Yeah, you know, I mean, sure, it hasn't been in our Empire for like 700 years, but, uh, well, Pepe Pitler's not a very logical guy. And now that we have access to Spain's soft and subtle underbelly, we will be taking full advantage of it, especially since they are now pushing through uh, France, which uh, we should probably put this war to an end. I call it P-Day. Not P, but like P for like Pepe. Oh, that is, uh, that is something else. We are just absolutely overwhelming them down here very quickly. <sighs> the sweet and subtle taste of revenge. It is a flavor I am uh, quite fond of. <laughs> uh, with the fall of Spain, that should be, uh, this war put to an end. Put to a juicy revenge, hate-filled end. <laughs> This is going to be a mess. Oh, with that war, we are pretty much, uh, well, we're almost close to our new world order, which is the Alliance of Heaven right now. It's looking pretty good, but there's still a little thorn in my side. Um, yeah, I also just embrace the idea that there, um, there are two Scandinavias. That's just a fact of this world now, I'm afraid, people. Oh, <laughs> well, they saved me the time and declared war on Earth. I mean, to be fair, though, uh... The map's not really agreeing with you there, Germany. It's looking very red. I uh, think I forgot about just how crap you are in World War I, Italy. Oh. Uh, I wasn't expecting that one to be over that quickly. Oh. There goes the war. Uh, right, yeah, the, the Italians definitely don't get a chance of existing in my world, I'm afraid. And with that final war, I think we have gone ahead. We've rebuilt the world from the ground up. We've got ourselves a nice little bit of revenge and our Mr. Patrick Hitler. And most cursed of all, we've also created two Scandinavias. Um, that one's probably going to end up being a problem at some point between them both, I imagine. But yeah, that was the Empire of Heaven. We've gone from the year 1066, we have lost wars, we have won wars, and now we are at the point where there is nowhere else to go. Technically, you could go to Stellaris, but I'd rather die. But yeah, regardless, I hope you very much enjoyed this series and enjoyed the, um, the little playthrough we've had in the Mega Campaign 2020 Christmas tradition. But yes, thank you very much for supporting my series. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. And there will be another one next year as usual. And here is the final little look at the world. I brought back Papal Brazil! Um, well, that don't... I don't look like the Pope. I ain't too sure who that is. And uh, I guess if we can take one thing away from any of this is that um, 
New Mexico is eternal <laughs> and will never be taken. But uh, I'm just going to leave it off now with all of the fan art that you guys have drawn of little Pepe. And uh, for Pepe, it's probably time he goes to The Hague and uh, probably goes to jail for a very long time. But till next time, guys, I'll catch you around. <laughs>